pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Trevor Chung uh, from Huawei. Uh, Trevor, well, Huawei is our most recently joined platinum member of the Open Group. And Trevor personally has put a lot of energy into both making that happen and uh, activities at all levels in the Open Group um, since joining. Um, so it's going to be great to hear what, uh, what he talks about today. Um, Trevor is, has a broad focus including digital transformation, customer experience management, something dear to his heart, cloud computing, enterprise architecture, platform strategy, IT for IT, Internet of Things, design thinking. So there are, I don't know how he finds time in the day, but um, he has many, many interests and expertise. Trevor is the founder of Huawei's Customer Experience Transformation Center, which is, um, has centers in Shenzhen, China, and London. Uh, Trevor has 20 years experience in technology and business leadership, specializing in providing thought leadership, creation of best practices, and ecosystem development. Prior to joining Huawei, Trevor was Motorola's Global Head of Services Str Strategy Alliance and Product Management. Today, Trevor's going to talk about, it, it, entitled, Architecting the Customer Experience, also known as a new approach to business transformation. So welcome, Trevor. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Let me find Okay. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so it's really early morning to me because my body is now about 4 a.m. in Hong Kong time. So uh, may I ask how many of you have visited Hong Kong before? Okay, can I, can I ask anyone to answer me? In winter time, what can be the coldest temperature in Hong Kong? Anyone will try? 10 degree? Anyone? Or less than 10? Less than 10, anyone? More than 10 in the winter? Okay. Yesterday, my son was very happy because the, the, the education bureau has announced no more school tomorrow, <laughs> yesterday, because it was 2 degrees, two, uh, C, 2 degrees C in Hong Kong. Never happened in the last 60 years. <laughs> yes, it was really, really cold. Of course, it's not as the East Coast. <laughs> but do you know most popular dish in Hong Kong on Sunday, uh, 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 in Sunday evening? Hot pot, where is Alan? Is Alan here? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, Alan can teach you or share with you what is hot pot in Asia. So it's a, it's a pot of water and then people cook together. Okay, that is something fun to, to have. And I'm not sure how popular of that is in the US. So, um, so now let me start my presentation. So, uh, architecting and customer experience, well, I was uh, uh, friends to have, um, it was great to have uh, PA Consulting, uh, Mark, to work with uh, Huawei, I think what, from six months ago? So we formed the Digital Business and Customer Experience Working Group. So I, I think this is a uh, kind of report to the uh, Open Group, what we have been talking, what we have done, and a case uh, uh, Huawei has been working uh, and we would like to share. So uh, this is the table of contents, uh, Rose Experience Principle. So well, kind of to explain the paper name, Rose to a framework for digital customer experience. So and I will elaborate more about this experience principle. And challenges to digital service provider and, uh, and, and there are I think two or three models we will share uh, that is contributed uh, uh, in the DBCX working group. Um, and the digital service provider e-guide, uh, we will like to, uh, it is still at the white paper stage, and we will like to uh, invite more contributor participants. And as I said, the real case, we are working with a European operators, uh, omni-channel management, embracing roles. And finally, I, I think there is something uh, I, I would like um, to look forward. Uh, at the open platform 3.0 around the DevOps and joint agile delivery. Uh, I think this is something really uh, in the IT standard is, is important for us to look at. 
And finally, where to from here? Uh, Rose Experience Principle, so it stands for real-time, on-demand, all-night DIY and social. So uh, it's experience principles for all industries. And also it's for all segments as well. So no matter it's for the segment of consumers, workforce, partners and citizens. And I think, uh, well, Mark just now present and talk about smart, I call smart X. So this is the real uh, transformation and the experience, and experience is very important, important factors and uh, we, we are not just looking at the consumers but also for the partners, for the ecosystems as well. So being a di digital service provider, so uh, what are those challenges? Well, uh, Chris Harding kick off with the uh, Digit, well, with the technologies. So I want, well, uh, uh, big data and many of others. And also, in order to be successful, the business model, customer experience, business capabilities can be ignored. So uh, in the later of the case, we will talk about how we can do better in customer experience and identify the right business capabilities using the, uh, applying the business architecture print, uh, uh, methodologies. And so who should provide the digital services? Any industry payers taking part in the digital service value chain and partner ecosystem should pay attention to it. So it's not just about the telco, uh, but also the government, finance, and healthcare industries as well. And they are getting, they are a big, they are being a, um, important players in the digital service value chain. And in the operations, in the depth, well, the depth of strong agile delivery and ecosystem partnering all should be addressed. So Huawei responds to the challenge. So uh, there will be a white paper published called Customer Experience Driven Enterprise Architecture. And is uh, similar to the, um, to the white paper uh, mentioned earlier. So it is under review and hope, well, we expect will be uh, 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 public in February. So the white paper is to address uh, an architectural approach, how service provider transform to works to a DSP. Um, and we, will, we see that this white paper has a close relationship connections with the DB6 work group. So, Customer experience involves whole organization. Uh, just now Mark talked a lot about uh, digital aspect, the digital customer experience. We would like to talk more on the, well, from the organization perspective. So marketing sales, service operation, customer care, development, etc. And in the user experience part, we can say, well, online, offline, and the network, which Mark addressed earlier. Network is being very important part if we want to do the, if we want to be success in the connected world or smart X. So we need to look at retail network, support building and the portal experience and et cetera as well. So how can we have a common terminology or common name for what we are talking? So uh, we would like to uh, bring in a, a, a name, a term called customer centric operating model. So really it's driving, as uh, Chris Harding uh, mentioned about persona, from persona, journey, value stream, process, to capability mapping, okay? And this capability is not talking about the business capability, it's more on the, the IT side of capabilities. And uh, you can see a, um, a quote from Charlie, uh, he's the principal uh, uh, analyst from Forrester Research. So we are, in Huawei, we are um, practicing uh, this enterprise architecture approach with customer experience. And I would like to mention one thing uh, uh, quite interesting when I they interview with Charlie. So uh, in China, well, we have something called uh, BAT, uh, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. Okay, so they're very uh, successful. Uh, they're being um, from copying from the U.S. industries to now innovating. But it's one thing uh, maybe you would like to be aware, and I mentioned in the uh, blog as well. So Alibaba is very different from Tencent. Tencent is managing or improving the experience from product perspective. So they will look at the data, they will improve the product, okay? But Alibaba is going very fast. 
One of the reason is they are applying the architectural approach. They can change based on the external uh, uh, business dynamics and pull in and pull out the business capabilities uh, in a really fast way to do, to implement. So um, another model is this custom experience reference model. So it's a contribution uh, from several companies, including well, PA, Huawei, and uh, from TM Form. And I, I would like to stress one point I really enjoy in past six months uh, uh, to work with others at the open group. Um, from the uh, uh, bottom right, you see the customer journey design model. That is more or less from the telecom management forum, from the tele industry. And I, I really enjoy it. We, after well, several rounds of good debate with other industry participants, uh, we were able to come out uh, at the DBACX, which is the customer experience ecosystem model. So it doesn't matter which industry we are in. So in every industry, we have a specific customer journey design model. But now we can have a common way to talk about, which is the uh, ecosystem model, which is I, I'm quite pleased with. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, in the digital business, it's all about uh, different industry across the value chain. So we, can, we have to look at many, many different industry, many, many, uh, and their corresponding um, business process or capability mapping. So what we have done is, uh, from the top left, the Telemanagement, the ETOM, uh, and the um, uh, bottom left, the uh, IT for IT from Open Group, and the APQC, and also the ITO. So we look at four, uh, uh, four different, well, let's call industry standards or best practice framework, and we are happy to show that uh, there's a business capability to have best of or not the best, well, I should say, to incorporate every different industry's perspectives. And if you can see at the top of the pyramid, uh, uh, which is the 6.0, Customer Experience Management. So what we are trying to move forward is to define very clear uh, the capabilities, the business capabilities related to the 6.0 CM, uh, 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 and the number eight ecosystem partnership management as well. And the digital, oh, something wrong, it's fine. Digital transformation framework. So from the governance, CEM, enterprise architecture. And this information will be shared in the uh, DSP, Digital Service Provider, white paper in different chapters, if you're interested. So basically what we are trying to do is to bring uh, the architecture, the open platform, uh, the, CE, uh, the DBCX activities. Can we put them into one picture and we can uh, start from strategy to transformation, program execution, and operations management. So let's start from an example. Omni-channel management. Um, I will start from the definition and benefits, and the uh, benefit story from the rational and the emotional aspects, uh, and the architectural blueprint. So, and then later with the identified legacy and new capabilities. Uh, Omnichannel is not something new in retail uh, and not new in the finance. But I haven't, ever, I haven't seen a, well, a architectural approach to address this matter. And also uh, bringing the um, ideas in the open platform 3.0 around the, well, the big data, the API management. So first of all, uh, that's the definition and benefits uh, about omnichannel. So it's really is the um, to deliver the personalized information at the time that people want. And this is a way we can uh, capitalize what we have been doing, what one uh, what we have been doing with the uh, uh, open platform 3.0 about big data, API management, and cloud, everything. So the business architecture focus on stakeholders' value perspectives. So there's a CMO, COO, partner, uh, chief service officer, and the, uh, the board as well. So look from every different personas, which require 
big data based analytics across the uh, pre buying, buying, using, and sharing life cycle. So, this is something uh, um, really important to understand the buyer's interests, their, per, uh, their personalities, and then change the internal. IT or the bit or, or, or the ICT architectures. So, the benefit story. So this will be related to people like well, an end user, Jeff, uh, which is the business executive, uh, or Sanjay, who is the well IT operations director, and Jenny, who is the customer care manager. So it's a case, as I mentioned, we are work we are working with the uh, with a European operator. And at the right, which is the world's experience principle, uh, so we apply the world's experience principle to guide, to make sure that uh, every persona will get, well, should get the experience uh, the person is looking for. For example, the end user, the timely new offer, real time and on demand, social, spreads, good word of mouth, uh, and also, well, to the uh, IT operations director, very important, how can an architect do a good job to the operation guys. Well, we source to support new offers on demand and access to all capabilities, and do it by himself, Sanjay. Yep. So the architecture blueprint from uh, Enterprise Value Go. This is a simplified version, of course. Uh, the business capabilities corresponding to the COO, CSO, CMO, and the CTO, and enabling the application functions and key technologies. So, driving from the experience, applying the Rose experience principle, applying the uh, business architecture, and we are able to, from the enterprise ready to go, and all the way map it back to the key technologies. Uh, as you can see from the uh, uh, bottom right, while well, applying the well, perform as a service, the virtual DC, codification, all these technologies. <coughs> And the uh, legacy and new capabilities for only experience. So uh, you can see from the color code, which is the uh, uh, gray, gray color is the legacy, and the red color are those new capabilities. So based on that, we from drive driving from the outside in, driving from the experience, and map it back to the missing capabilities or what capability and, and capabilities should be retired as well. So this is for the only experience, and this is for the digitized and agile operations. Similarly, same thing. Uh, so uh, uh, there's a lot of new capabilities are required in the digitized and agile op operations perspective. And this is something, uh, well, for my architecture team. So this is the business operations model. If we put everything together, maybe back to different uh, uh, stakeholders from the Board, CTIO, CDO, COO, uh, line of business. So how everything can come back together to the front end and back end. I am sure this is not something new to the architecture uh, uh, communities, but the important part is driving from the persona, driving from the customer experience, and then ex and then ultimately drive it back to the uh, 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 to, to to get all different kind of stakeholders able to get together to s deliver the experience customer looking for. And the cost layer model wheel. Actually this is quite interesting. Um, from I really I, I pay attention to the uh, architecture uh, uh, activities. I listen to many um, C level presentations. Is what we are doing ultimately must tie back to the return on investment. So we um, we talk about the key capabilities and orchestrations, and then to the bottom right, the application technology building work box. So move it back to the investment, move go back to the ROI. But the ROI has to be in sync or in a way that communicate to the experience, the value goes, the personas. Are we doing good enough, or can we do better? And I think this is something we, we are trying to uh, address and bring it up at the DB6 and the DSP e guide, Digital Service Provider e guide. And um, 
For the DevOps and joint agile delivery, uh, this is from my company perspective. So a uh, lot of us are active in the open source, in the um, development operation space. So that one is more for the development and operations. How about for the for the people who are from the uh, uh, from the service buyer perspective? We believe that there's something we need to uh, define, which is the joint agile delivery. A buyer can work with the uh, 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 maybe cloud operation team or cloud service provider. And then they don't worry much about the development side, but they really worry about the delivery of the services in the production stage. So this is something from uh, especially after the continuous delivery, go into the deployment stage. Uh, we are practicing that and we are applying this model in the uh, omnichannel delivery, as I presented earlier. And this is my last slide. Where to from here? So um, Huawei is keeping, well, forming the home of digital transformation. Uh, Mark kick off with the uh, digital space. I'm, I personally see there's a lot of uh, talk, of course, in the industry because it's big. It's huge market. So um, I think Open Group is a good place to get everyone together because we have the well enterprise architecture, we have the IT4ID, we have the um, open platform free dossier and others as well. So um, me as representing Huawei, uh, uh, um, so we would like to uh, get everyone together. Let's focus on the digital transformation. Let's get multiple standard bodies. Well, at this moment, we are mostly working with, well, of course, Open Group, uh, Teddy Management Forum, uh, OpenStack, BA Glut, uh, ITO, o, uh, OMG. So how can we get standard bodies together? And we are focusing on a specific topic, digital transformation. And the second one is uh, move from the white paper to digital service provider e-guide. Yes, please, please join us. And again, this is not something just about the uh, telco. We believe the government, the finance and healthcare forums uh, or, or participant uh, uh, can contribute a lot with us. And the next, which is the plan to share the joint LGL delivery, not by me. Uh, I just do a, uh, a warm up here, which is I think maybe in, uh, in London or in Austin forum. So my colleagues from the business process and IT, they will be sharing the uh, uh, joint agile delivery, how we are doing that with the um, operator, bis or, uh, operator business. And we will share the reference architecture and implementation of using open source uh, software. And uh, I think that is something we can work with. Well, TJ is there, well, work with Boeing or, uh, about the uh, open architecture of using open source to from the architecture and into the reference implementation. There will be something uh, Huawei is really excited about. And finally, this is well building a better connected world. Uh, we look at all different aspects from the standards, and Huawei is well. Uh, well, we look forward to working with others. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Trevor. Can I invite you to take a seat for a few questions? Uh, we've got some questions, I think, going to be uh, asked from the back of the... Any, anyone have any questions? There's one here. Um, James DeRave, our, our long-term VP of certification and now responsible for what goes on in India for the Open Group, will uh, ask the first question. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much, Trevor. Um, so the first question is not a question, uh, but could we please mention that um, DBCX Working Group will meet this afternoon from 2 till 3.30 um, in the Russian Hill Room up on floor 30, so those who want to participate in that, um, it's not currently on the printed agenda, so that's one copy. Now, do we have any other questions? I, I had something to ask you, Trevor. We, we, um, you talked about some of the benefits of the Omni approach and one of the things I noticed was reduced cost of dealing with um, customer service inquiries mm. and by going self-service among, among other things. And we heard Chris talk, Chris Harding talk this morning about 
how sometimes the experience of dealing with self-service and and through through online chats gives a less than desirable outcome. How do you get the balance right between the two? How do you design the right the right mix of the two? Well, it, it's a very good question, uh, Steve. Um, I think really, we when we oppose some of our clients, they also well to return on investment as well. I think we really need to have a um, uh, a data to justify to show, okay, this particular segment of people, uh, if we can serve them better, what will be the return? So I think it's all back to the um, the data lake, the analytics. We need to have we cannot have siloed data, and that is the power of cloud computing as well. So uh, this is why well, why is really. Uh, um, commit to the uh, open platform 3.0 uh, using the technology to enable uh, a better uh, decision in the uh, customer, experience man in, uh, customer experience management investment. Uh, um, and the DB6 at, at this moment is sitting at the, um, the open platform and the uh, architecture forums. I think it's a good way, uh, next stage is to Start to bring into the ROI, the, Im the investment perspective, into the into the forum works as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any specific in, in dealing with um, uh, an online customer experience, or, or uh, certain age groups are more used to it? I'm put, trying to put this delicately. Certain age groups are more willing to um, not speak to a real person. Mm. Um, than others. Um, are there any specific strategies that you follow to, to take care of perhaps those that actually do want at the end of the day to be able to speak to a person? Well, so that's why we need to apply the omni-channel way. We can take data from uh, no matter what channels and then we can analyze and understand the user behavior and then apply the right way. Uh, uh, this this is not that easy actually. When you analyze, when you well, when you get the data and analyze, and then apply the right channel, and then consistent information. Uh, this is something we we have been practicing, and I think as you say, uh, even uh, uh, the young generation, or maybe some people actually, the business traveler as well, they may not want to talk to the customer service uh, during the business trip. So how can we understand? And of course, that will be back to the, I think previously, someone asked Mark about the data privacy as well. So uh, the regulation part is very, well, we need to really understand the local regulations and the security, uh, data privacy and security policy per country basis. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's something interesting. And, and I think that's why we picked this omni-channel case to show today. Yeah, uh, it's a good point, there, there may be geographic and cultural influences yeah. on what works as well so okay thank you last call for any questions for Trevor or oh, we do have one Kirk back on the question of um, the um, some people would like to do it live, some people might not. It strikes me that there will be a number of factors that you probably don't have access to, such as is the person an introvert or an extrovert is something that could very much affect how they would like to deal with you, but you're not going to have data on that unless you force your customers to do Myers-Briggs, which probably is not feasible. I'm, I'm wondering how you manage things like that where the data is just it seems to me uh, not available. Well, uh, of course, the definitions of available is really related to the business purpose. And um, again, it's back to the ecosystem. How can we not competing by a single product, by ecosystem base? That is what we are uh, trying in the, uh, well, in Huawei, we have the consumer business group as well. So uh, we, are work, we are working you say, in, in an ecosystem base, gathering data, not just from a particular touch point, but many, many different touch points, and, and keep testing it and trying to meet whether we meet the business purpose. And there's a debate about, well, big data, fast data, whatever. There's a lot, a lot of uh, uh, different saying. But I think ultimately, it's the business purpose. Yeah. So we have uh, one more here. 
Um, it's important to understand the customer to deliver a good experience. How can we do this without appearing to be intrusive? Without? Appearing to be intrusive. Oh, well, I think um, there's a lot of cases now. Well, you can sign up, right? Opt in. There's one of the way to do it. And a lot of companies are, are practicing it. And uh, also, well, I think in the telco side, we observe when you are um, you opt in and use the free Wi-Fi as well. I think ultimately it's a business answer. It's a give and take. How can we understand a particular personas? You can give something, the person is, re is willing in return to give you access to data. So this is not just a technology question, it's a business question that we need to uh, have a better understanding uh, uh, by analyzing different user behavior and interest. Yes. I think mean, there's someone at the back. It's clearly different if it's a customer that you don't know, that's a potential customer. But if you look at customers that you do know, you certainly can take their product information, what you know about them, and increasingly their social information, and try and predict both in-store and out-of-store experiences, correct? Yes, of course. Uh, that's why just now I mentioned about the ecosystem, competing for the ecosystem. I think now, well, with the uh, API, especially the RESTful API technologies, it is very easy to share data and share information in the real time. And uh, uh, this is a totally new way we can compete upon the digital technologies. And, um, and actually, I, I, I also personally found that, you, you know what, just now I was uh, in the break, I was reading the Hong Kong newspaper. It was quite interesting. I see an ad. It's about one of the best 10 San Francisco restaurants. <laughs> okay? How can you imagine that, right? Now, actually, they assess, they know my location. And the Hong Kong newspaper actually has an agreement with someone through their ecosystem and then push this app to me. And I, have, I just check it out and that there are 10 restaurants. And it looks promising anyway. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, they say you can, they, they say in San Francisco you could eat at a different restaurant for the rest of your life and never eat in the same place twice. Yes, I think in, in conclusion, yes, well, understanding the experience, understanding the people, work from a ecosystem thinking, applying, applying the digital technologies available. So I think there's a big space for us to to compete, and uh, by doing that, we can work, especially at the B2B business, we can work across multiple industry uh, segments, and that will be really something, uh, um, wow, uh, in, 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 our, in our thinking is, we, it can be something really big in this smart X uh, uh, opportunities coming to us, yeah. okay. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, James. And thanks once again, yeah, Trevor. Thanks, thanks. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.